is I have to comment on John Bolton's book. Uh, as you know, John Bolton uh, in, um, uh, has written a book about his time uh, in the Trump administration, uh, a book that has caused a lot of stir and, and has been condemned by everybody who supports Trump. Uh, it is, it is a, a book that, uh, that the Trump administration has both labeled as uh, giving away state secrets and being a total lie. By the way, it can't be both. It's either a total lie or it's giving away state secrets. It's hard to do both of those things at the same time. Although I guess parts of the book could be giving away state secrets and part of it could be a lie. The book has been permitted by a judge to be published. If the, if the Trump administration wanted to stop it from publication, they really waited a long time uh, in order to do it, and, and they didn't make a very effective case. And they didn't sue the right people. The whole thing was, was weird, to say the least. The book makes the case that, well, actually, the book makes the case that I have been right all along about Trump. The book makes the case that Trump is incompetent, ignorant, narcissistic, uh, has no clue about American interests, has no clue about what would make America first, uh, what would make America great, um, is much more interested in getting reelected than he is in pursuing American self-interest, is much more interested in getting photo opportunities than in actually uh, pursuing American self-interest and American uh, uh, success in the world out there. And Bolton, who was in the room, actually in the room, uh, gives all the stories and the facts about it. Now, people say he's lying, he's exaggerating. You know, I know something about John Bolton. Uh, not, I, I don't know him well. I've met him a couple of times. I think he would know who I am, but I'm not sure. Uh, we've met. I've read a lot of his stuff. I basically started following John Bolton after 9-11 and then when he became um, our ambassador in the UN and then it follows his career since then. I spoke to him in uh, studio. We bumped into each other just before he got, he was nominated by, by Trump to be his national security advisor. Um, but more than that, I know people who know Bolton and, and I've read a lot of the people who know Bolton, not people who speculate about Bolton, not uh, uh, Trump uh, cronies who will say anything, but people who actually know Bolton. And the one thing Bolton is not known for is lying. Bolton agree or disagree with him, and it's things I violently disagree with him, although uh, there are a lot of things I agree with him as well. He is not a liar. He is a man of integrity who's often wrong, but he is so concerned about getting the facts right that he is known to carry a journal with him and to write in the journal exactly what happens. To, to, to not rely on his recollection days later, but to write it down as it's happening or to write it down that evening what has happened during the day. He is well known in the foreign policy establishment in Washington, not as a member of the deep state. Indeed, the deep state hates John Bolton. John Bolton is the real, to what, you, what some of you believe Trump is to the deep state, John Bolton really is. When John Bolton was at the UN, the deep state, almost the people, the, the bureaucrats, the, the, the traditional people in the State Department almost had a heart attack. They almost died. They flipped out because he's, he's strong. He's an America first kind of guy, a true America first. He knows his stuff, and he's a real hawk. Now, again, I don't agree with him on everything, and he's not a neocon. He's not a neocon. The neocons don't like John Bolton because Bolton, for example, is willing to deal with dictators if it's in America's self-interest, whereas neocons wouldn't do that. Again, I'm not supporting him. I think he said in the latest, somebody asked if he's backing Biden. In the last interview I saw, he said he would not vote for either one of them. He'd write in a conservative candidate. He would not vote for Trump and he would not vote for Biden. But he has stories about, about uh, Trump that people go, whoa. And I go, of course. It makes complete sense. He says Trump asked Xi, the authoritarian dictator of China, to help him 
in the elections. Now, does anybody have any doubt that Trump did that? I mean, I remember seeing Trump on national television ask China to help him take out Joe Biden. That was on national TV. Do you really think in a private meeting Trump wouldn't, given everything we know about Trump and given his character, wouldn't ask the Chinese president to help him out to get reelected by buying a lot of farm stuff so that the farmers who voted for Trump wouldn't be hurt and he wouldn't lose the farm belt? Is there any doubt that he did that? Of course he did it. And he did it, he was so, he's so oblivious, he did it with somebody like John Bolton in the room and not caring. Now, Bolton also says that Trump didn't know Finland was part of Russia. Yeah. That surprises anybody? He, he knows almost nothing about geography. He also supposedly he didn't know that the United Kingdom was a nuclear power. I think Biden would know a lot more than Trump is. Biden is a goofball, but he's, he's, he's knowledgeable. I won't say smart, because I don't know and I don't think he is, but he's knowledgeable. I disagree with him on, on ideas, but he certainly knows his geography. He's been around long enough. Yeah, you know, Biden is a hundred times more informed, a, a million times more informed than Trump is on these kind of issues. Uh, by the way, I, I, I'm sure, I, I mean, uh, Jonah Goldberg, who writes about this, says, <laughs> he says, he's sure Trump got the idea that Finland was part of Russia from Putin, another dictator that, that uh, John Bolton just is horrified by how Trump grovels over and is supportive of. He didn't know what the TPP was, the Trans-Pacific Partnership, when he spoke out against it, but he didn't know what it was. He thought in 2018 that relations with Russia had never been worse. Remember the Soviet Union? Remember the Cold War? He said in 2016, well, anyway, so these are, these are some examples. I mean, it just goes on and on of examples that Trump is as bad as I've always thought he was. And think about it this way, for you who still hold on to the idea that Trump is the Messiah. His former national security advisor, Bolton, his secretary of defense, Mathis, his chief of staff, Kelly, who used to be the, the, the Department of, of, of Homeland Security, who Trump loved because he was very tough on the border, his ch former chief of staff, Kelly, and his former secretary of state, the former very, very successful CEO of Exxon, whose name escapes me right now. All four of them, the four leading positions, at least foreign policy-wise, in the White House, all basically have said, all of them have said, that Donald Trump is unfit for the job of president. Now, we're not talking about some mealy-mouthed leftist uh, 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 radicals. We're talking about Rex Tillerson, who is a strong advocate for capitalism. He's flawed, but strong advocate for capitalism, and one of the more successful CEOs of the last 20, 30 years. We're talking about John Kelly, a, 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 a military officer of high distinction. We're talking about General Mathis, who's hugely regarded in the military. I don't regard him as that big of a deal, but hugely regarded, in, and as a tough guy, mad dog Mathis. And we're talking about John Bolton, a, an America first hawk. All of them think, all of them intelligent, all of them, you know, really smart. That Donald Trump is unfit for the job he holds, even though they took a position there. They were all bought into the idea of getting rid of the swamp. They all bought into it. None of them, not one of them, could be said to be part of the deep state. He's not a loose cannon. He, in the words of Rex Tillerson, Donald Trump is a moron. He knows nothing. He believes in nothing. He holds no ideas. He will use anybody to achieve his narcissistic goals. He cares nothing, nothing 
for the interests of America or the interests of the American people. Bolton is not deep state. He is hated by the deep state. The deep state hates Bolton. Nobody in the foreign policy establishment hates anybody more than they hate John Bolton. You guys know, I've followed the foreign policy establishment in Washington, D.C. since 9-11 very closely. And John Bolton is despised and hated. Just go find articles and comments that people made about him when he was U.N. ambassador. Bolton, I mean, yes, the Trump accolades want to call him deep state now. But that's ridiculous. Bolton is peak military industrial complex. What are you talking about? You have no evidence of that. You have no proof of that. You have nothing. Bolton hasn't, doesn't, you know, doesn't have a private island somewhere funded by the military industrial complex because they've been paying him a gazillion. He writes, he speaks, he supports certain foreign policy positions that are unpopular, unpopular, and he is a straight shooter. So I don't know. I, you know, uh, I don't know what people are holding on to what people are relying on in their support for Trump. You know, it's, it's basically being case after case. And then how anybody still supports Trump after his just abysmal performance in, in, in the coronavirus and then his pathetic performance with the demonstrations and rights, how anybody is still supportive of this man is beyond me. I understand that you might support him because the opposition is worse. But to be positive about Donald Trump, after all this, after all this, is just... And you should read Bolton's book. You should read Bolton's book. I intend to, when I have a chance, uh, read it or at least skim it. But all Bolton's book is doing is confirming exactly what I have been telling you for four plus years. There's nothing that Bolton Book has revealed that I have not already told you in principle over the last four years. What we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think. Meaning, any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brute. Using the Super Chat, and I noticed yesterday when I appealed for uh, support for the show, many of you stepped forward and actually... Uh, supported the show for the first time, so I'll do it again. Maybe we'll get some more today. Um, if you like what you're hearing, if you appreciate what I'm doing, then I appreciate your support. Uh, those of you who don't yet support the show, please take this opportunity. Go to yourunbrookshow.com slash support or go to subscribestar.com, your own book show, and, um, and, and make a kind of a monthly contribution uh, to, keep this, uh, to keep this going. I'm not sure when the next...